Hello and welcome to this new episode of Linux Literacy. Today, grep the way to search through your system. Coming up. So yes, today we are talking about grep, so we are going to talk about how to use the command and also all the ways that it can enhance your experience on Linux. So to start, we actually need a file to test all of our grep command on. So this will be the file that we will be using. Yes, a file called file. Uh, and it of course has a bunch of numbers for each of the lines and some text throughout that file. So let's actually get started. There is three ways that you can use grep. The first one would be the standard way where you would start with the grep command. After that, you put what you want to search through your file. And after that, the file that you want to search from. So that way it will give you the results. So we see in our case, it give us the full line that contains the word text, which is line number four. Now, what we can also do is to give grep a whole directory to recursively search through that directory. So with the dash R option, we can do grep dash R, then what we want to search in our case, the same thing, let's do text and do the directory, which we can do the directory that we're in right now, dot slash. And because there is only our file called file, we can search through that and it will tell us, hey, inside a file, there is this line that contain text in it. So you can do it that way. And the last way that you can actually use grep is with a pipe. So you can use the output of another program. Let's say that we use cat. So cat, of course, is used to read a file. So we read the content of file. And then with grep, we can search through the output for the line that contain text. And it will, of course, give us the same output. So that's the basic way that grep operates. Now there's a bunch of features that actually help us make our grep query make a little bit more sense. So one that you will probably use a lot will be the case insensitive one. So you can use dash I in order to make it case insensitive. So it will find result capitalized or not as long as it follows the characters that you have. So for example, here we can do this, um, this of course, is capitalized in our file, but because we have the dash I, it will still find line one and line four, which contain a capitalized this. So that's one way that you can do thing. You can also make an inverted search. It can be very useful if you want to remove repeated lines that you don't really care about, but you want to see everything else. So in our case, let's do dash V, which is for inverted search. After that, we put what we want to search. We can do text and our file in that way, it will show every line, but line number four that contains text. We can also ask grep to only give us full word. So for example, let's do grep dash W and let's just do text. So we don't have the T at the end. We just have T E X. Now, if we were to use grep normally, it would define only the three character of text and it would show us the whole line. Now, in our case, it won't work because it wants a full word. Now, if we add the T, it will show us the line because, of course, it can find the word text inside of the file, but it needs to be a full word. So that can be useful when parsing through text. You can do the exact same thing, but for a line. So let's do grep dash X one, where it will search for the whole line with one. Of course, that line does not exist. Now, if we do the same thing, but for the whole line of one, one, this is a file, then it will find, of course, the full line. So we can restrict our search to the exact full line of search. Now, one thing that you might want to do is to have multiple search inside of the same grep query. So let's say that I want to find file and I also want to find the word text. So in that case, I would use dash E two time in order to tell grep that we want to find both of those words. So you can put dash E as much as you want, and it will search each keyword that you provide it. So in that way, it will give us line one and line four, which of course contain file and text. We can also ask grep to display the line number of what it finds. So if we do dash n, it will provide us with the line where it found the matching keyword. 
So that's a great way to actually know where to look afterward, because sometimes you want to use grep, not really for the information that you that you're finding at the time, but to know where to look in order to have more detail afterwards. So grep is good for that also. Talking about more detail afterward or before, there's a way to tell grep, hey, I want you to show me the lines that are after or the lines that are before. The way to do that is with dash capital A and then the number of line that you want to see after. So if you want to see after the result, you do dash capital A, the number of line that you want, let's do for example one, it will show us one line after our result. We can do the same thing for before. So we do dash capital B, the number of lines that we want, let's do two, so it will show us two lines before the matching keyword. And we can even do in both side at the same time with dash capital C, and we can put let's say three, where it will go and check three line before and after our match keyword. So that can be of course useful if we need to look a little bit around what we found. Now for some script, you might want to only want the first result or the first two or three result, but not the thousands that may come afterward. For that, you are going to use dash M. So dash M and the number of lines that you want to keep. So if you do grab dash M this, in our case, we have two this in the file, we have line one and line four, it will only keep the first occurrence of our match, which is line one. And in that case, we see it prints only line one, we can also ask grep to give us a count of all the time this is in the file. So the keyword is in the file for that we use dash C. So we see using dash C, we have to this in our file. So we can use grep to actually count the amount of time that we have something happen in a file. Now, one other thing that is very useful is the use of regular expression. Now, regular expression are a way that you can kind of spice up your query, you can add a lot of detail, I'm not going to go deep into them at all. But for example, let's use this query that actually tells grep, hey, I want every line that ends in T. So if the line ends in T, it will show up if it doesn't, of course, there's nothing that will happen. So with this query, we can achieve that we can of course achieve a bunch of more things, but that would probably require a whole video on regular expression alone. But there are very useful when you want to get into more complex ways of finding matching patterns. Now in my own personal use of grep, the most useful feature is less about finding things and more about coloring things. So I like the fact that grep is able to use the color in the terminal and actually make things a little bit more visible. It can really help when you have a bunch of script that are there to maybe process some log. And after that, you want to maybe see the error log just pop up a little bit more. Now, grep as a lot of other program that uses color needs to be forced to use color when it is passed as a variable or as it is saved into a file, you need to force it to save the color to actually produce the color because grep will detect if it's being shared with the terminal or if it's being shared with the variable or uh, stored in a file or shared with another command. So what you need to do if you want to pass around those colors, you need to do dash dash color equal always, and then you can manipulate, let's say your grep output with another program before actually showing them on screen. So inside of your script, that can be very useful. And also we were talking about highlighting things a little bit earlier, you can also use literally grep only to highlight things. For that you need to use a little hack and in the video I actually fell because I write test instead of text but when I manage to write the right thing we see that this command actually only highlights what we choose to highlight and will print everything else. So that's very useful because in that case we could let's say show an entire log and actually highlight the errors or maybe highlight certain pattern that we would want to see and the way that works is actually pretty funny because it tells the system to search, of course, for the keyword that we give it. And after that, the backslash and the pipe tells the system, if nothing is found, if there is no matching pattern, I want you to highlight the 
end of the line, but of course end of the line is not a displayed character, so it will highlight something that does not exist, so for our purposes it won't highlight anything. So it actually shows all of the data and it only highlights the things that you want, so that can be very, very useful with your scripts. Now this is about it. Grep is a pretty simple piece of software, but it is a very powerful one. So of course, integrate it into your day-to-day -day use because it is one way to simplify your life and your scripts. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, of course, subscribe, leave a like, leave some good comments. I love it. And if you want to show that you're a Chad, you can write color and write it in whatever your country of choice actually writes it. I'm sorry if I used the wrong um, color writing for you. Um, I could write it in French and you would probably all be triggered. So yeah, I, I'm starting to think that would be a really good idea. Let's, let's write color in French everywhere. People are going to uh, <laughs> die looking at my videos. Anyway, color is the keyword to say that you're a unit. Now, of course, if you want to see the, those videos before anybody else, you can become a member, that's always appreciated. And for now, of course, take care. Oh, and stay hyped for the Linux release that's coming up in a couple of days. Take care.